call the May 29th Special Town Council meeting to order, and I would ask that you would rise and join with me in honoring America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Councilor Roy? Here. Councilor Holbrook? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor St. Killer? Here. Councilor Slade? Here. Councilor Benedict? Here. Chairman Alquist? Here. Next on the agenda is a public comment. Uh, if what we're going to do is everybody can line up if you want. Uh, this is we take a half hour of our meeting, the first half hour, and we leave it open to public comment. Everybody will get three minutes, and uh, we'll give you a heads up when you're at the end of your time. Not to cut anybody off, we would never do that, but once that public comment is done, we're going to read the order, and then those people that didn't speak will have an opportunity to speak. So it's our goal that everybody can speak who would like to tonight. So again, it's going to be a half hour public comment. We're going to read the order uh, according to our rules, and then the rest of the folks can speak. Again, it's three minutes. Keep your comments directed to the council, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll open the public comment. Anybody would like to speak? Um, George, did you want to? My name is Kelly Murphy. I live at 12 Eagles Nest Drive, and I'm also a member of the Board of Education. So <clears throat> budget season is by far the worst part of being an elected official in this town. There's so much energy expended by all parties trying to make the best decisions for citizens young and old. It's an absolutely thankless job. Put too much in the budget and people get angry about increased spending make limited increases, or hold the line on spending, and others are angry that we aren't investing for the future. When the budget referendum failed on May 14th, you all must have had a sinking feeling in your stomachs, too. Great. More meetings, more work. The school budget passed by the town council and presented to the voters was much lower than the budget presented by the school board. Your reduction of over $600,000 at that time reflected a hope that cost shifting from the state wouldn't come to fruition. We all have our fingers crossed that, that we won't get a big bill once the state budget is settled. In light of the referendum results, the school board passed the revised budget last week. The reduction of $54,000 is an amount that would have the least immediate educational impact on our children. I have seen what the school budget should look like. I've seen that budget shrink week after week, meeting after meeting, hour after hour, away from our families and jobs. The budget presented to the council in late April was skin and bones. That's why I could not support any further reductions and voted against the budget reduction you'll see tonight. We can't keep shrinking and trimming, delaying and deferring programs that are essential to providing our children a high quality education. Our staff works incredibly hard and are incredibly good at their jobs. That's the only reason we've gotten as far as we have. Those A and B rankings from the governor would not have happened without their tireless dedication. Not only do we ask them to prepare our kids for the future, a future unlike anything we've experienced growing up, we're asking them to do it with less money and for lower compensation than their peers in other districts. The wheels on this train are about to come off. Shortchanging our school system year after year is short-sighted and a recipe for a situation that will take years to recover from. I'm here tonight asking you to stand up for your prior budget and to make no additional cuts to a budget that has nothing left to cut. Thank you. Thank you. Next. You know what? I'm going to ask you to hold your applause because we want to get as many people in as we can to speak. And it's only fair to those folks. So go ahead. Next. My name is Scott Furr. I live at 16 Old Colony Lane. I've lived in Scarborough for six years. I have three young school-aged children. And I often only show up to these meetings when it regards schools or beaches because those are the two reasons I moved to Scarborough, schools being the number one reason. The schools here are great. The Teachers and the administration do an amazing job with the dollars per student that they have, which is one of the lowest in the area. I ask that you just don't take voter apathy as a, a sign of, of what this town wants. Um, that's really the bigger problem here. I can guarantee you that if you go forward with a budget that 
doesn't cut anything further than you already have, that I will get the voter base that I know to show up and vote for the next vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, Carrie Goulder, 10 Thomas Drive. I'd like to read a letter that my daughter wrote. I have been drawing since I was little. I got my painting in an art museum two months ago, the Portland Art Museum. If you cut library, art, or music, you will also be cutting off kids' talents like mine. So I feel that you should not cut off subjects, special subjects from Scarborough schools. I'd like to add that when you look at all the children in this room, I wonder what they dream to be. The next president of the United States, a modern Picasso, the next Mozart, a veterinarian, the scientist that will cure breast cancer. Our kids dream big. What do we tell them when the budget continues to be cut? Get a new dream. When you cut educational budgets, you are cutting their dreams. Please do not continue to cut the budget. In the United States, best high school list, Scarborough ranked 1,251. Our next door neighbors, Cape Elizabeth, ranked 549. Falmouth ranked 360. Yarmouth ranked 198. I say from where we stand, we're way too low. If you continue to cut the budgets, we will not even make the list next time. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Please. My name is Jeff Ertman. I live on 15 Fairway Drive here in Scarborough. I'm here tonight to urge the council to consider the importance of maintaining a strong school system and the financial support required to do so. I appreciate the difficulty of your task that you face, and I appreciate uh, what it is that you will be up against over the, in the coming days and weeks. The numbers originally presented by the school department some weeks ago merely sought to maintain the status quo, that staff cuts would not be a consideration at that time. School board member Jackie Perry was quoted in the leader at that time of that budget saying, quote, this will allow us to, fall not further, to not fall further behind, end quote. We were being asked to accept at that time a budget that would have allowed us to tread water. This from a school district that has one of the lowest per pupil expenditures in the region combined with a tax rate that is the second lowest in southern Maine. I hear many objections to the school budget from citizens who feel the budget is too high, that Scarborough has one of the best school districts in the area, that their own kids got a good education in Scarborough. That was then. Today, costs to keep kids competitive in today's world have gone up dramatically. Technology considerations cannot be ignored, and this costs money. To quote an old business adage, it takes money to make money. We cannot hope to advance our kids' future without an investment in them. Now. As I mentioned, you council members have got a difficult job in the coming days and weeks, but members of the community should be reminded that town council is charged with the stewardship of the town of Scarborough, making it possible for Scarborough to put its best foot forward. This includes making available to the school department the necessary resources to ensure that schools can at least compete with neighboring communities, never mind getting consideration as being one of the best in the area. For many years, Scarborough has enjoyed the reputation as being an attractive community because of its schools. Many families, including ours, moved here because of the schools. In general, people don't move because the roads are kept up or because the town has shiny fire engines or because the roads are plowed quickly in the wintertime. Yes, all of these things are nice, but people move because of high quality schools. Reputations are hard to recover once they're lost. The town of Scarborough is at great peril for this reputation to be lost if prospective home buyers start paying attention to statistics that show how little we spend on students and how low, our how low our tax rate is. They will take that as a sign that we don't care about education. When businesses scout out prospective locations, many will look to communities with strong schools. Declining school resources can negatively impact business growth as well. I want our community and our kids to be proud of their schools. I want kids to look back fondly on their educational experiences and opportunities in Scarborough as ones that set them up to succeed in life and to consider setting down roots in Scarborough to continue to help, to continue to help our town grow. This can start today with a vote of confidence in our schools. Thanks for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next. Good evening. Dave Dittmer, 11 Woodside Drive. I addressed the council a couple of weeks ago um, when the first budget went through, and I still support that budget uh, as minimum as it was. Um, 
2011, I believe, the Wentworth uh, Building Committee came out and 8,500 people voted in an election, 4,000, the exact number is 4,792 voted to support Wentworth School, a $39 million bond. In this past um, school budget vote, 1,500 people voted. Do not mistake the last vote as a mandate for no more school money. Think of it more as a missed opportunity. I take responsibility as a voter and a citizen for not getting out and educating people. We need to do more of that if we want this system to work. All of us here tonight have showed up tonight in response to a problem that was created because we didn't get out the first time and didn't get our neighbors and friends out and to get them to understand the situation. The situation as it is, the school board has put together a recommendation for a um, $324 increase per $300,000. Every amount you take down below that is going to cut directly into programs, extracurriculars and curricular programs. If you get down to, say, a 3% increase, that will make it from a $324 to $165 increase per $300,000 value. $160. It's about 50 cents a day. When you consider the budget, are you going to consider how much does this 50 cents really mean per day? Can we take 50 cents per day? I think we can. I think we have to hold the line here, and you have to hold the line here and say the schools are too important, the budget needs to be passed, and it needs to be passed so that the town can go forward. We've been holding ground. We need to move forward. So thank you for considering it. Thank you. Next. Jeff Jordan, 3 Springbrook Lane. Scarborough is a great community with a great school, great teachers, and great people who support it. With these proposed budget cuts, though, we are heading towards crisis mode, and we don't have to go there. The budget didn't pass because people didn't show up to vote. Only 10% showed up to vote. There are 3,000 plus kids in our schools and their families will vote to support the, uh, this budget. You just need to get the word out. The first vote was not well publicized, but now it is. While the previous vote refused the school budget proposal, it is not to say that we need to cut the budget. Nothing mandates that, and I think a positive proactive approach is in order. And uh, we as a community can successfully pass the original budget or even a higher budget. I propose that we press forward and reinstate the $3 million that was originally budgeted and get the message out there that there is a vote and the people need to show their support. I think what people are paying closer attention to and there will be an overwhelming support for the originally proposed budget or even an increase. The community at large does not want to see our kids deprived of positive opportunities and a healthy learning environment. In the proposed cuts, the first tier targets the arts, music, and academic endeavors. Cutting these out is a huge mistake because, you, because you're not supporting kids who don't play athletics. If you cut the arts and ec academic ec extracurricular activities, you'll have nothing for kids that don't do sports. The Scarborough Middle School drama team has repeatedly produced shows that are well received and a great success. The Technology Club encourages our kids to stretch their minds and explore the reaches of their creativity. Yet these are among the programs that are being targeted. All the children deserve the opportunities that will help them to grow and get in, in, into well-rounded individuals and focus on their strengths. Eliminating these programs will be a tremendous loss to our children and our community. These programs promote and encourage artistic behavior and mental growth and provide opportunities that are not readily available elsewhere. Furthermore, they create a positive can-do attitude to, in our kids and serve them through the, throughout their lives. The programs of the first tier of cuts will reduce only minimal savings and are only a one-time reduction. Once gone, they won't be there to use next year as a money-saving method, and overall nothing of that benefit really comes from uh, cutting them. It is much easier to take away than to build, but in the end, you've done nothing but reduce a wonderful overall program to nothing, a shell of its greatness. When this pattern of school budget cuts began several years ago, the art show was one of the first things to go, apparent low-hanging and relatively low-cost fruit. Yet it has a tremendous cost because it provides all the children throughout the school system an opportunity to do something and to feel good about it and to let us, the public, see what they have accomplished. 
this should be reinstated. It's programs like this that our children that help our children grow, and their cost is relatively insignificant. This doesn't even begin to touch on the direct educational resources that are being lost and are continuing to be eliminated if the tiered structure is implemented, nor does it address the necessary infrastructure changes in terms of software that are necessary to maintain a quality school. It costs money to hire teachers and workers, to provide resources and to operate facilities the size of schools. There's no way around that. We cannot keep spending levels at what they were in past years and expect to maintain the quality of education that we have built. Could you wrap, wrap it up, please? Uh, yeah. Um, I basically, I ask you the town council and the school board to be the stewards that we elected, to go forward, uh, to be forward thinking and see the future, not just through the next fiscal cycle, but 5, 10, 20 years down the road. And trust, entrusting a budgeting process to individuals in a referendum format is questionable at best, given the, the enterprise the size of Scarborough and how these budgets and spending can affect the overall good of people. Don't succumb to the uh, less than 10% minority of people who have rejected the budget. Stand tall and let your community know that our children are important to our present and our future. I ask you to rely on and trust your wisdom in these matters. I ask you to give our kids, our schools, our, our town the chance and opportunity they are also rightly deserve. In the end, we are all beneficiaries. Thank you. Thank you for your time and consideration. I want to remind people, that keep it at three minutes. We have a lot of people who would like to speak here tonight, so it's not fair if somebody goes on. And we're going to give you a little warning when the time is up. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, good evening. My name is Alec Lang, and I live at 11 Abigail Way. I'm a seventh grader at Scarborough Middle School, and I'm here on behalf of the Scarborough students to advocate a budget with minimal cuts. Today at school, I was able to gather over 150 student signatures supporting a budget with minimal cuts. Only three students out of those I asked to go on to sign. As you can see, we have overwhelming student support for a budget with minimal cuts. This year, I participated in, in math team, Lego robotics team, and computer club. I have first-hand experience of the positive effects of after-school activities. I'm concerned for the potential loss that Scarborough students may experience without after-school activities. I hope that you will place the education of students at a high priority. I ask that you consider the current proposed budget and attempt to minimize the budget cuts. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, please. We want everybody to speak. Next, wrap right up. My name is Michelle Arvin. I live at 9 Coulthard Farms Road. I'd like to thank the town councilors for supporting the school budget that went to voter referendum on May 14th. We all know the numbers from the vote, and the results appeared to send the message that the school budget was too high. However, if we chose, choose to focus on the numbers, we can't ignore the number six. If only 10% of our population voted, and you do the math, it means approximately 6% voted no, sending the message that our schools should operate with a reduced budget. 6%. I will be the first to say that I'm angry, frustrated, and embarrassed about the poor voter turnout. However, voter apathy does not translate into school apathy. Scarborough parents do care and support a strong school system. Here are just a few ways of, that we act to show our support. Each and every day, Scarborough parents are in our schools volunteering their personal time. Where clerical staffing is inadequate, volunteers assist with photocopying and stuffing weekly envelopes going home. When class sizes are large teachers are f and teachers are faced with a multitude of academic levels in the same classroom, volunteers assist with students with reading, writing, and more. When library staffing is inadequate, volunteers assist with reshelving books. And there are so many other ways volunteers help in our schools to pitch in where the budget has failed our children. Scarborough parents are also financially generous. We purchase supplies for classroom needs, tissues, crayons, art supplies, and more. Each year, teacher, each year, teachers are posting giving trees for parents to help purchase these supplies. <coughs> PTAs work tireless, tirelessly to fundraise each and every year. These funds often provide students with field trip opportunities to supplement classroom learning. This year, my fourth grader went to Augusta, the State House and Historical Museum in Fort Western. He exited the bus with excitement, telling me all about his Fort Western experience. My sixth grade daughter has attended several field trips to area businesses, participated in team building at Camp Ketcha, and given back to Scarborough with beach cleanup trips. What a great investment. Many of our athletic and school groups are supported by booster clubs. Without the sp financial support and parent volunteer hours, many of these activities would exist in a diminished capacity or entirely eliminated. The school budget fails our children when co-curricular activities disappear, music and band, drama, academic clubs, athletics. They all contribute to a well-rounded student. Finally, a significant message was sent to our town with the development of the Scarborough Ed Foundation last year. 
This foundation was formed to enhance academic excellence in Scarborough Public Schools by funding innovative and creative educational pro programs that fall outside of the tra traditional school budget. Why do these programs fall outside the traditional school budget? Because we can barely fund a status quo budget. I urge you to look at the grants that have been awarded on the SEF website. You will be astounded by the creativity and innovation of our teachers and students. Once again, Scarborough parents donating their time and energy and financially supporting our students. Unfortunately, all these efforts are still not enough to get Scarborough schools where they need to be. Parent support and dedication serve as band-aids to the larger issue, an inadequate school budget. In closing, only 10% voice their opinions. However, Scarborough parents voice our support of schools each and every day through our actions. Please don't ignore our voices and our actions and support the school budget as proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Good evening. My name is Karam Durda. I'm from Six Haystack Circle. I would caution the readiness of a proverbial fiscal cutting sword for reasons that are related to you as human beings. A cut would be immoral. It's easy to dismiss such as grandstanding, but is it? Because of the cut of funding, my children will not receive education that will empower them to do good in the world. They will not be able to stretch into the technological boundaries of creativity and thought. They will fail to rev up onto fourth gear and become forward-leaning change agents of the world. Yes, this will not happen if you cut and cut and cut. Or is it that I exaggerate? Highly unlikely, given that as someone who is immensely involved in the collegiate-level advisory boards of the state, I see students from Scarborough who are ill-prepared, not maximized to the potential, and not who can be what they are meant to be. Yes, Scarborough overall may note, notch some notables, but that is in spite of the challenges. Is that what you want your legacy to be? I live and breathe in the world of leading-edge global manufacturing and technology and entrepreneurship, and I can sincerely assure you that if you cut, you will rob you and my children the ability to make a living. Do I exaggerate? If you eliminate, reduce, don't expand foreign languages, after-school activities, drama, music clubs, middle school PE and athletics, you do exactly that. You take from our kids the ability to make a living and change the world. Exactly that. A cut would be unethical. It would be unethical because under any and all objective and subjective human thought processes and constructs, the marginalization, the marginalization and robbery of promising capability from our children is such an activity that brings out the lesser in all of us. So in doing the cut, you would bring out the onset of the inhuman, the inhuman who is selfish, who is a prisoner to lack of critical thought and insight. A cut would be demographic short-sightedness. There is a demographic schism in this town, and the facts as at are unsettling and controversial and conversationally hard as they may be are non-negotiable. There is a steady influx of young professionals who have made this town vibrant and whose kids are knitting the social fabric. Do you want to disenfranchise them? Do you want them to slowly leave? Do you want to be responsible for the onset of the rot of quiet desperation? I doubt it. But in the event your political and critical thought leanings are dogmatic and unwavering in their objective ossification, you have my utmost disrespect. Demonstrating the alternative, you will have something more valuable and important than my admiration. You will be a contributor to my kids not feeling cheated. Increase the budget by several million and you have my respect. I realize that taxation and all that baggage that accompanies that word, the deed, the act, is one of historical and promissory significance. And I realize that there are many members of our community of fixed incomes, and if there's no allowance in their budget and my vocal desire to be taxed, be taxed, be taxed, be taxed, so that my kids can have a better life than me or antithetical to their way of life, then so be it. Yes, so be it, and let the schism stand. Tax me for all it's worth. Cut public services to the bone, but leave my kids out of this miserable reduction. If in your myopia you sacrifice the education of my kids for the lack of brave decision-making, then let my voice be a strong indicator where I think you will be on the side of history, the dark side of rejection. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Step right up. Please hold your applause. Mm -hmm. give her a chance to applause for everybody at the end. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You're uh, up. Kara O'Brien, 24 Woodfield Drive. I'm a parent, a volunteer. Mm -hmm and I support and I love the Scarborough schools. Um, like Michelle and Dave said, I strongly believe that the low ver voter turnout does not reflect at all the attitude of the town and the parents in the town. I think tonight's turnout really reflects how parents feel, um, especially after 4,700 people did vote for the Scarborough, um, the new Wentworth school. 
Um, for me personally, I attended two of the community dialogues, um, enthusiastically attended both, enjoyed being in the, in the high school cafeteria where the room was full of educators, parents, and students who brainstormed um, new ideas to improve the school system. I left there excited, and now, weeks later, the school budget doesn't pass. Um, I thought that dialogue was a huge success, and I know many of us want to live in a town where the town council and community together can agree to improve, improve the education system, not by getting by or eliminating programs. So please, please don't reduce the town budget. Thank you. Next. Good evening. My name is Paul Kozell. I live at Fort Lillian Way here in Scarborough. Uh, I have two children, a kindergarten student as well as a, uh, a sixth grader. I'm a part owner of a construction company in Freeport, Maine. I've been in, here in Scarborough since 2001. I'm an active school volunteer. I'm here tonight to speak in full support of the school board's position regarding the school budget and in full support of only cutting the $54,000. Unlike others, I do not intend to march a parade of horribles in front of the council. Instead, I'm asking the council, the folks home watching, and the eventual voters to consider the following. First, I do not like my property taxes to increase. Second, there are parts of the budget I simply do not agree with. So why am I supporting the school board's position? I am supporting this position because this budget, like any budget I have ever worked on, large and small, is not supposed to make everybody happy. Instead, a budget through compromise is supposed to make everyone reasonably unhappy. This budget is a good compromise and represents a lot of work by a lot of people and simply cannot be cut any further than what is being proposed by the school board. In looking at the school board <coughs> budget and seeing what has occurred in Augusta regarding state funding, my concern is that any cuts beyond $54,000 that's being proposed by the school board is going to cause irreparable harm and damage to our schools. Whether it be business or a school system, there comes a point where cost cutting goes too far and frankly begins to erode the actual core infrastructure of a business or school. Stated differently, when cuts go too far, good employees at our business or teachers and administrators in this room leave. When cuts go too far, equipment at our company or programs at this school system which could be fixed end up not being replaced and fall into non-existence. For these reasons, any cuts, any cuts beyond $54,000 brings us to a point of going too far and is completely contrary to the best interests of our children and to our town. As I said earlier, there are things about this budget I do not like. However, the original budget that went to the voters two weeks ago, as well as the one being proposed today, makes me reasonably unhappy. For these reasons, I will be voting in favor of this budget, as I did before, and encourage others to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to do a little business and get right back to the public comment. Lawrence Pierce, 910 Lane. I guess I'm here to represent an older segment of this population, and I, of this community, and I'd simply like to say that I think cutting the school budget any further is irresponsible, and I would like to urge you to be responsible. Thank you. Thank you. I, hold, hold. Number 1347 is the first reading on the proposed fiscal year 2014 school budget and schedule a public hearing and second reading for Wednesday, June 5th, 2013. We're going to have public comment, but the superintendent, somebody? Chair of the board has a few comments to make. Go ahead. That's all right. Good evening. I'm Christine Massengill. I'm the chair of the Board of Education. And this evening, we have a short slide presentation just to let you know where we currently are. Um, our 2014 budget, the Leadership Council um, came forward with a responsive community expectations, credible, balanced, student-centered, compliant with all federal, 
and state mandates. The Town Council developed a municipal budget that maintains essential services and infrastructure. It targeted a 3% increase on the expenditure side. Fact, with the school budget as revised, all budget objectives of both the Town Council and the school board will be achieved. Overall, municipal expenditures will increase less than 3%. Further reductions in the school budget will result in the failure of both governance structures, the town council and school board, to achieve their budget objectives. Fact, with the school board's proposed budget, the community will have invested an average of 2.14% annually over the last five years. Fact, increases in discretionary spending, the cost of contracted services, classroom supplies and equipment, professional development and maintenance, if you can really call those discretionary, represent $429,457,000 or approximately 1.1% of the total 3.87% increase. The remainder is driven by the following. We have salaries and wages, we have our Anthem insurance premium increase, a federal grant sequestration, we have our main retirement rate adjustment, and debt service. This impact to, total ta to local taxes is compounded by a loss of $1.2 million plus in state aid. Tackling these drivers will require structural changes and will require a collaborative effort, not just by the schools, but across the town. Fact, of the cohort of 13 comparative and academically competitive districts, Scarborough ranks last in overall per pupil spending, while also spending below the state average. Special education and debt service costs are at the state average. Spending on administration, transportation, and facilities are the lowest and below state average. We are asking you, as the Board of Education, to please honor the work that has been done by the school leaders and the board. Educate yourselves on what damage additional random cuts will have on the investments that the community has already made in our schools. And please adopt the budget that the school board has identified as the bare essentials, mission critical budget. Please. Do not jeopardize the future of our community's children. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go on. Uh, can we keep this going? We're going to go on with uh, comments. you got three minutes. Name and address, please. Ben McDougal, 3 Partridge Lane. I moved to Scarborough four months ago, and the primary reason was for the school system. And uh, I, I know a lot of other young people in the Portland area who feel the same way. Scarborough has a reputation along with Cape Elizabeth, Yarmouth, and Falmouth as one of the top school systems in the greater Portland area. Uh, it makes young people want to put roots down here, spend their money here, get building permits here, build houses here, and support the economy. Uh, it, it may be interesting to, if we could poll, you know, the last 200 houses that were built in Scarborough, if we could poll those people and ask them for the two reasons they moved to Scarborough. And I, I think at least 75% of those people are going to say one of those reasons was the school system. Uh, I, I think it will really hurt Scarborough's economy in the long run if the school system loses its reputation. I urge you not to cut any more than 54000 and uh, thank you for the work you do. Great. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. Hi there. My name is Chris Taylor, uh, 168 Black Point Road. Um, there's a saying that out of crisis comes opportunity. So I'm hoping that this is an opportunity for a better direction. Uh, I think, I'm trying to think of a good word, I guess apologize is what I want to say on behalf of the parents of school age kids for what happened two weeks ago. I was shocked. I felt like spitting because I was so angry and probably said things at times that weren't so appropriate for the number of people that didn't show up. But as other people said tonight, I don't think that that is a fair representation of the way people feel about the Scarborough schools, as you can see from the room tonight. I do recognize the difficult job you all have to do, and I appreciate it um, for everything that you do night after night, week after week, listening to um, difficult decisions. 
And I know that you have to listen to your constituents. And I was here two weeks ago when there were, I don't know, 40 people in the room, 30. Um, and your constituents voted down the budget, uh, both at the polls and uh, largely in this room that night. So I'm hoping this is a turnaround that your constituents, we will see, largely um, support a school budget that's strong, that makes minimal cuts. So I urge you to do that, to make as minimal cuts as possible. I wasn't crazy about the last budget, but I got a phone call from Dr. Entwistle saying go with it, that it's not the greatest, but it's our best shot, so I went with it. Um, so I appreciate what you're doing, and I know that you have to make the cuts you need to, but I would ask you to make it as minimal as possible. I do appreciate the direction our school district's been going in the last several years under Dr. Entwistle's direction. I think for several years we were plateauing. As other people said, I think we had a really good run for 10, 20 years maybe with top sports teams in the state and academic decathlons and high rankings, all with one of the lowest mill rates in the state. How we did it, I guess just a lot of hard work. But as someone said, I don't know if the wheels are going to come off, but I know that that run's going to end. Dr. Entwistle put a lot of things in place that brought us in a more positive direction, that we were no longer plateauing, but not on an increase with the um, Scarborough Education Fund, the community dialogues. So I would like to continue on that direction, and I really ask you to support that. I guess lastly, I just want to say that, as uh, Mr. Ertman said earlier, this isn't the set, that was then, this is now. It's not the 70s, 60s, 80s, whatever decade you want to look at. When I first moved to Maine, I lived in Westbrook, and the guy that cut my hair would talk about the jobs at the mill, you know, at Sappy or before Sappy, I guess it was West Warren, S.D. Warren. You didn't even have to finish high school. You get a job paying $16, $17, $18 an hour or whatnot. We know those jobs are gone. Manufacturing's gone, so forget it. Yeah, even a bachelor's these days is uh, sometimes not enough. So we know that jobs in uh, technology and engineering and whatnot are are the direction that a lot of young people need to go in these days, and so we have to invest in those things. And I do know it's expensive, and I'm just saying that so folks that, who are not crazy about some of these cost increases do keep that in mind, that there are no more mill jobs, there are no more manufacturing jobs, shoe jobs, that's just not there. And I can't imagine a better investment than investing in our children. Thank you. Thank you. Next. My name is Dave Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. Common misconception here tonight is we're cutting the school budget. We're not cutting the school budget. It's going up from what it was last year. And by doing so, you ask me to pay more in taxes, of which I cannot afford to do anymore. So my recommendation to all these parents that are now showed up tonight that didn't care enough to come vote, that was your prerogative. But don't ask me to increase my taxes. I'm going to ask you to reach into your wallet and pull out your checkbook or $100 or $500 and make a donation. Directed to us. Make a donation to the school department and help them out. But don't increase everyone's taxes in this town because there's a lot of people on fixed income that cannot afford this kind of increase. And it's an increase. It's not a decrease in the budget. And if the school board would like some help, I'd be more than happy to sit down with them and show them where to make some cuts that you don't have a room full of parents that are all concerned that their children's going to lose art and music and all those kind of things. I'll make some cuts for you. It'll be on the upper end. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hello, I'm Deborah Fee Sharpman from Fairway Drive. I get that everyone dislikes taxes, including me, and we dislike them even more when they go up. I even get that the millions of dollars needed to educate our kids are, is high, and many just simply say, cut the school budget, the taxes are too high, because they don't get a say on other town expenditures, like the fancy new signs to the beaches. I'm hoping that many people who voted to cut the budget did not realize the gravity of the cuts that would then follow. I am hoping that they don't realize how low taxes are in this town compared to most southern towns in this area. I am also hoping that many of the good intentions to vote for a better budget, people like parents, singles, and some seniors, found themselves too busy that day to vote and now regret it. Our town is competing with others to attract businesses and citizens who add value to our community. A strong and competitive school system is one of the most important factors to do this. 
We are educating future workforce and leaders of tomorrow. We need a high quality education not only for kids who plan to be neurosurgeons, but also for kids who go on to be hairdressers, stay at home moms, firemen and contractors like yourselves, as they may go on to be town councillors managing the finances and directing the future of an entire town. I am hoping that the future of our town is not being steered from a town with the lowest per pupil spending in the 13 community, surrounding communities to one with the lowest spending in the entire state. Unfortunately, it seems like some in our community would not be displeased with this. As it is, our school's level of achievement is barely surviving with the help of a huge group of volunteers and many large private fundraising efforts. Many families moved here valuing education and also add home support and private enrichment outside of school. Do not be so proud of a recent A rating for our high school. As is also reported, only 66% of students proficient in math and 61% proficient in reading. I have been saddened by the requests from teachers over the years for things like Kleenex boxes, a box of plain white paper, and pencil sharpeners, since there was no budget, money in the budget for them. When all is said, talking of cutting an already extremely slim budget for our kids is short-sighted for our town, our nation, and just plain sad. Thank you. Next. <coughs> My name is William Bly. I reside at 10 Ottawa Woods Road. Uh, a lot of people have spoken very eloquently, and I thought to myself, what can I say that's really different? And the perspective I want to give you is, whether it's an organization, whether it's a school district, whether it's a town, uh, there's only two things or three things that can happen. You can progress forward and improve, or you can fall behind, or you can do what Scarborough has been doing and treading water until you drown. There's a gentleman that came up before me and says he wasn't sure if the wheels were going to come off the bus soon. I feel like those wheels are coming off. I can tell you when I was making the decision with my wife to pick a town where we we're going to live, the first thing we looked at were the schools, first and foremost. Scarborough at the time was ranked towards the top, and I think Scarborough has been really resting on their laurels when it comes to funding because we've done so well in the past. As a parent, I'm very concerned when I hear other parents relaying stories about paper that can't be supplied to teachers. My wife constantly purchases small school supplies for our teachers at eight corners. That's part of being a parent, but it's also indicative of a more systemic problem where we are underfunded. You can't have it all ways. You can't have a district where people don't pay high taxes and you have a good school system. And the decision that this town council has to face is, are you willing to invest in the future of this town through the school system, or are you going to make these drastic cuts and watch young professionals and their families, like myself, eventually leave for other towns, such as Falmouth or Yarmouth, where they do invest more money in their schools? And don't think for a moment that doesn't make a difference because people don't care about brand new police cruisers in this town. We care about the schools. Of course, we want a low crime rate. That's great for the Scarborough PD, but we really care about the education of our children. And if we think we're getting short thrifted, people will eventually move, and it will affect this town dramatically, not next year, but in the next 10 years. And you really need to think about that moving forward. Thank you. Next. Good evening. Uh, Tina Pettengill. I live at 1100 Point Drive. Um, you've heard a lot of great facts from folks who have spoken before me tonight, but I just wanted to give you a little picture of the reality for those of you who might not have kids in the district uh, or in the district currently. Uh, I have a son going into high school. I have a daughter going into fifth and a daughter going into second. So I have a little bit of a perspective of kind of how this hits home in terms of the budget. Um, and I just want to note before I give you that picture that uh, every teacher through all my, all my three children, every um, teacher we've had, every administrator have been unbelievable. I mean, top notch from start to finish have been just incredible. So this is no reflection on them. But last year when some of the most severe budget cuts really went into effect, my, my son was in seventh grade and he wasn't bringing any homework home. 
And as a, all good parents, I was completely distrusting that he, I thought he was just not doing his homework. <laughs> so at our first fall conference, I went to his teacher and I said, well, I don't understand. He, he's not bringing any homework home. How, he has less homework in seventh grade than he did in sixth grade. What's going on? She said, well, maybe you didn't hear, but they cut foreign language. So he's got an open period. And they cut PE, so he's got another open period. And then he's got a regular open period. So some days he's got four open periods during a day where he was doing nothing. Um, well, he was doing his homework, thank goodness. But um, so that's why he wasn't bringing anything home, though. And I didn't even know that until I got to that conference, um, what, why that had transpired. But that's the reality of what we're talking about, open periods, nothing to do kids with not a lot of direction and not getting the resources and the types of classes that they need. Um, other things that I've noticed, um, of course, also at the same time, besides the foreign language and PE, the uh, sports teams were also cut. Um, so we had 70 kids, 70 boys, seventh grade boys try out for soccer. Um, they had cut the kind of the B and the C teams without any um, prior knowledge to that. So um, out of those 70 kids, uh, 50 of them were heartbroken. Uh, I mean, and my son, thank goodness, was one of the ones who made it, but 50 of his friends did not make it, and there were no alternatives for them for after school sports or intramurals because those had been cut too. Um, it, was, it was devastating. Um, we were just so relieved that a lot of those cuts have been restored for this year, and this year has been so much better on so many fronts. Um, a couple other realities that we've encountered as a family since my son started kindergarten, um, larger class sizes in every grade um, throughout the system, after school programs um, and sports fees, um, which I'm fine with that, but I know that's very, very difficult for families with um, no means to pay those after school fees and their sports fees. No art show, um, there's field trip fees, there's music fees, there's equipment fees, um, there are class supply requirements, as other people have mentioned, um, and much, much more. Um, and I, I, the last thing I'll close, but um, the last thing I want to say is I, we, as many other people, when we moved here 10 years ago, we were deciding between Yarmouth and Scarborough, decided on Scarborough because the schools were, were very similar to Yarmouth. At the same time, my, um, my brother's family moved to Yarmouth, and I have a nephew and a niece in the Scarborough system at the same ages as my kids. And let me just tell you, I mean, suffice it to say, we are not keeping up with those districts in any way, shape, or form. So I just ask you to please consider the reality of these cuts, not just the, um, the actual prices. Thank you. Thank you. you. Next. Hello, I'm Doug Bennett, I live at 32 Tall Pines Road. I'm um, here to ask the council to limit the cuts to the school budget to the $54,000 recommended by the school board. Education is one of the most important things we can pass on to our children, and to put a price tag on the future of our children is scary. Think about all the great towns we live in, that, live in, that, have, that we have here in Maine. Cape, Falmouth, Yarmouth, Cumberland, to name a few. They all have something in common. They make education a priority. Now think of some of the other towns in Maine that aren't quite as fortunate, and think what they have in common. They don't make education a priority. Now think of some of those, oh, I already read that line, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> good schools, yeah, it's a very good one. Make sure I read it again. Uh, good schools are the cornerstone of the foundation of every community. Good, comp good uh, competitive schools create and attract educated individuals, which in turn attract high quality businesses, which support the tax base. Will this be happening in Scarborough in the future? What will happen to our property value as education continues to become less and less a priority in this town? When someone wants to move to south, southern Maine, they usually start, begin searching, researching Scarborough, Cape, Falmouth, Yarmouth, and Cumberland. What are they going to see when they research Scarborough? They're going to see a town where education is no longer moving forward. They're going to see a town where education is being minimalized. They're going to see a town where programs are being cut. We don't live 40 years ago where education changes slowly and people have the attitude that it was good enough for me, it's good enough for my children. This is 2013. Our students need to have programs and courses that support a student when they enter the modern world. I graduated from Scarborough in 1987. I'm a redskin through and through. I live in Scarborough. My son goes to Scar school here. And I'm a teacher and I'm a coach here in Scarborough. I love this town. I have witnessed Scarborough's rise from a town where few people wanted to live in this town to, uh, to a town that now has high prominence and prestige. And this all came on the backs of the school. But I'm now watching Scarborough slide into mediocrity because of how, our, how we are treating our schools. This needs to end no matter how bad the economy is, no matter how small the impact this has on our taxes, and no matter what 10% of the population says. 
What makes these other towns I mentioned earlier is so strong is they make incremental improvements to their schools each and every year. Nothing crazy, just steady incremental improvements. We made them last year, but this has already been taken away by the rejection of the, uh, by the, rejection of the proposed budget this year. So this year we are taking steps backwards again. Those schools I mentioned are uh, teaching children to thrive in today's world. They're adding high school electives that fit the modern world and co-curricular activities that enhance college applications. They're adding foreign language at lower levels, not cutting it. I encourage all of us to once again think about the impact of our property value as someone from out of state researches schools and sees what is happening in Scarborough compared to other towns. Think about how long it will take us to catch up to schools that are dedicated to education and, and as they move forward each year and we hope for the status quo in a good year. Now think about how our children can compete against students from Cape, Falmouth, Yarmouth, and Cumberland schools. Is Scarborough given that opportunity? I really don't think so. So what are, what are schools going to do now? We've cut 41 positions in the last three years. Programs have been uh, ended. Athletic programs have already been cut. Again, how much deeper should cuts go? I despise paying taxes with a passion. When I get my tax bill, I get sick to my stomach. But the thought of saving $250 a year or perhaps losing, I don't know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in the value of my house doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense? Wrap it up. Yeah, sure. Um, the biggest problem I have for my son is that he isn't competing against students from Scarborough. He's competing against students from all over the country, all over New England, and from Cape, and Falmouth, and Yarmouth, and, uh, and, and uh, Cumberland. Towns like Cape, Falmouth, and Yarmouth, Cumberland are dedicated to making an incremental improvement to education each year, and Scarborough continues to sleep, slip into mediocrity. Thank you very much, and I appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hold your applause. Listen, if, if anybody really needs a chair, we have one down front. If uh, you need it, just come on down and sit down. Name and address, please. Yep, my name is Derek Volk. I live at 4 Elbridge Oliver Way. I was hoping my wife was going to speak, but she's stuck in Augusta, so I jotted down some notes. Not very high. Um, so I have four kids, age 20, almost 22 to 9, and I moved, like several people have said, I moved to Scarborough because of the schools. I was living in Portland, and we wanted better schools for our kids. I'm very worried that my nine-year-old will not receive the same education that my 19 and 22-year-old did. Now, to start out on a little lighter note, my uh, other interest is I'm a middle school softball coach, and I've seen that there are going to be some cuts to middle school athletics. Now, I'm not really worried about my kids. Uh, my kids have been involved in travel sports uh, from the time that they were very little, but there are kids on my team, and the Seventh grade coach is here too somewhere because he was texting me earlier. There are kids on these teams, these middle school teams, that this is their only opportunity to play sports, especially in Scarborough. They are not going to play high school sports in a town like Scarborough. And the, the, the lessons that they're learning from team sports in those two years is very important, and I urge you to keep that in mind. Team sports do matter. Now, when it comes to the actual education of the, of the kids, uh, my 19-year-old was able to take uh, Spanish in middle school. She kept progressing and eventually took AP Spanish and now is majoring in, in Spanish in college. Will my 9-year-old have that same opportunity? My 9-year-old that I talk about, who recently came home and told us that she has to bring her own pencils to school because the teacher told them that they couldn't keep buying pencils. I also have a 14-year-old. We were wondering, as one of the other teachers was wondering, about why she didn't seem to ever have any books. She never brought any books home. We got to the teacher conference, and we asked, how come she's never bringing any, any books home? We don't have enough books. What do you mean you don't have enough books? There's only three science books. This is a uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade class. There are three science books for the whole class. This is science. It's not something that doesn't change pretty rapidly, and they're from 2003. They're using science books from 2003. That's pretty pathetic in a state that is constantly saying that we don't have enough jobs, uh, that we don't have enough people to fill science and technology jobs here in the state, and yet our school has three science books for a whole entire classroom full of kids. And lastly, uh, my 22-year-old is special needs. Now, you're not going to see anything in any of these emails that are going around or any of the budget reports that they're cutting special ed because that's a, a, a soft spot for people. It's tough to cut. But 
there are people in this room and this row actually who sat in very lengthy meetings to try to get my I'll wrap it up right now to get my son through school it was not easy to get that kid out of that school and some people were very happy to see him leave <laughs> but when a nine-year-old with special needs ends up in the high school is, uh, is that child going to get the same services? Are they going to be as quick to do all the things that they did, and I commend them, to get my son through school? I don't think so. Not if, we, they don't have it, not if they're buying pencils and they don't have enough science books. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. Good evening. Jeff Porter, Cumberland Way. Uh, I have two children in the school system, uh, one in fourth grade and one in first grade. I've lived in Scarborough for a number of years. It's a great town, and I appreciate all the time and energy that all of you put in, as well as the school committee. It's a thankless, thankless volunteer job. I know that. And you have to listen to all of us and make important decisions. I'm here tonight to just tell a quick story about the school system. Basically, this is a school system that strives to be first place and first rate in everything it does, but suffers from third-rate funding. A couple of years ago, you hired a terrific superintendent to lead the school system, and he's trying his best without the money to do it. There's a lot of increasing class sizes going on since even my uh, older son, older, uh, oldest daughter uh, has started going to school. Her class sizes have incrementally gone up. There's been cuts in visual and performing arts. There's been layoffs in that area. There's been shifting of staff. Uh, my daughter had three different music teachers in three different years because the system had to keep uh, laying people off and bumping people and shifting people from one position to the next. And when that happened, there was no consistency with music. It was like starting over year after year. There's lack of basic supplies. Um, as Derek had said right before me, um, pencils. Uh, in my, both of my children's classrooms, there's not enough pencils or pens. You have to bring your own. Tissues, there are no tissues in my daughter's classroom. You have to bring tissues, you have to donate those. My children have gone to school for years on a broken down, rusty, dilapidated bus. Okay, the bus fleet in this town is pathetic. I think there's been a couple of new buses bought in the last couple of years. It's reimbursed by the state, but we don't qualify because the town doesn't put enough miles on its buses. Uh, but that, that's no way to have children going to school. The technology in this district is way, way behind other area districts. Districts that you wouldn't believe or imagine around us uh, have technology in their classrooms that are about 10 times better than the ones we have here. Lack of appropriate teacher tools like copiers, having one copier for 25 or 30 classrooms is not adequate. books and supplies, cuts to counselors, after-school program cuts, inconsistent funding for foreign language. I don't know if my kids have foreign language or don't have foreign language. Every year it seems to change. We have to wait for the message. This is a revenue short budget. This is not an expenditure heavy budget. The revenues are not coming in from the state. The state doesn't have the money to produce the revenues. It's no one's fault. We shouldn't point fingers. But I think we just have to ask ourselves the question, are we willing to step up in our community? We can blame the state, we can blame the federal government for their lack of ability to pay for our schools. But in that point, is it worth, is civilization worth paying for? Because we're talking about civilization. And there was a gentleman earlier that spoke about, let's get the parents to donate. Every generation has an, has an opportunity and a responsibility to pay for the next generation. I, I'm not going to say 30 years from now, it's a cop-out. Sorry, I can't pay for it. Parents, please donate all your money. No, the school system is paid for by the public tax dollars. And we have to support it adequately. And right now, this is an underfunded and dismantling and crumbling school system that needs better support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Josh Chiazzo. Uh, I live at 17 Elmwood Avenue, uh, and I've lived here for 12 years, and I uh, attend Scarborough High School as a freshman. Uh, first thing I would like to address is uh, that I think that is, it is 
insane to be able to think that you should uh, cut education the way that you are. A $54,000 cut is maybe not so bad, but anything beyond there could destroy what we are learning right now. I personally have almost zero French books in my class. We have had to distribute French books among five or six kids with one book. We've all had to share our own books. Uh, we've all had to share books. In my uh, science class, we're having a shortage on laptops. We're having a shortage on graphing paper. We're having a shortage on pencils. We're having a shortage on rulers. We're having a shortage on everything. And I think it is incredibly unfair to say that 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 we're we'll we'll be doing fine for now when we're not. We're we're, we're not. I'm sorry. I'm incredibly nervous. I just <laughs> I wrote out like a three-page speech and then didn't bring it purposely because I thought that uh, should be coming from what I learned here, which is obviously not working. But uh. <laughs> so obviously uh, it's going to be extremely imminent to to cut at least fifty-four thousand dollars from the school budget, but anything else that you cut from there could severely damage what's going on as well. I know that there are a lot of people here that are not going to see, want to see their taxes go up, but it is a responsibility for you to pay your taxes. <laughs> it is. It is. And I understand, I completely understand, especially in, in what's going on with the economy right now, that nobody wants to see their taxes go up. But unfortunately, I mean, I, I don't want to see my family's taxes go up, but if you're going to, you know, money has to come from somewhere, and it's not, obviously it's not coming from the state with our low mill rate that's happening currently, but, um, you know, money has to come from somewhere. And as well, it's as much the responsibility of the parents as, from, it's as much responsibility to the parents as it is to the council. A 10% vote is disgusting. <laughs> and I'm saying that in all seriousness. That is absolutely hey, disgusting. Can I can't believe. Speak to us. That, absolutely. I can't believe that everybody is. I mean, there's people that you can't complain if you're not voting, because it's not your space. It's not your place to be able to say that your child isn't getting enough, isn't getting education when you're not. You can't stand by your child to say. To, to to vote for their sorry, vote for <laughs> their education. As well, there are over three hundred three thousand three hundred students in our school, and I think that if I mean almost every single one of them does after school activities. There are forty three activities after school activities alone in the high school, and that's not including you know, the, the, the other schools. And every single one of those uh, after-school activities is being attended by 10 or more students. So it's not as though, like, there are people that are not going. I mean, everybody's going. Wrap, They're, wrap it up, please. Absolutely. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Max, hold your applause. Can we have an extra step right off? You can name an address, please. I'm uh, Justin Chiazzo. Uh I live on 17 and what have. I have lived here for 12 years, and I'm a sixth grader in Scarborough Middle School. And I do not want the town to make further cuts in the budget, because if they proceed to make any further cuts, then we will lose our school activities, such as the sports that run through the middle school. And as a middle schooler student, I will not get to sh um, have the competitive experience that I would have hoped for in the sports. Thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. So, so I'm Ben Perino. I'm, I live in Eight Crossing Drive. And um, so just um, three quick points. One, um, thank you to the town council for letting us speak. Um, those of you who didn't vote um, recently, um, we're lucky. We're lucky we get a chance to talk about it again, because we, we did have a chance, right? And so we should feel very lucky. We get, a, we get another chance right here, so thank you. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about worried about the school system in Scarborough, and so I thought I'd give a, a, a little bit um, of a perspective that maybe someone else gave a few people ago. But, so I have four kids, 
I have a senior in high school, and then I have two kids, uh, a sophomore and an eighth grader, and then I have a uh, sixth grader. So Scarborough is a very different um, school system for my sixth grader versus my senior. My senior um, it was a, uh, had a very sort of um, fantastic experience um, academically and, and athletically and was a very strong candidate when he was applying to colleges and is going to a superb college next year. I'm very thankful for that and very thankful to Scarborough and the school system. My sixth grade son is a bright kid, um, but he's had larger class sizes. Some of my son's class sizes were as small as six to eight kids. Um, larger class sizes, uh, He's lost um, the ability to participate in a lot of foreign languages, a lot of the athletic things that you guys have already heard about. So sort of as we sort of think about as our son moves through the system, we're going to face some big decisions when he gets to high school of whether to send him to Portland and one of the private schools versus continue him in Scarborough. We are big public school supporters, and, and we'd love to continue our kid going through the Scarborough school system. But further cuts are, are going to be a no-brainer for us. Um, but not everyone's in that position where they can sort of just send their kid somewhere else, and I think you guys need to, to sort of consider that. It's a very different school system. The sort of cat's already out of the bag. Um, the third thing um, is less, for, less for, um, for you guys, but for you guys. We need to support the Scarborough Educational Foundation. So if you don't support it now, you need to support it um, because it's not always going to come out of tax dollars. We need to sort of put our money okay. where our mouth is. And Speak thank you. Us. Up here. What's that? Keep Can you hear that? Comments coming to the front, okay? Yeah. But I think um, I think it's important to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Next, name and address in three minutes. Bob Mitchell, 39 Willowdale Road. Uh, just for the record, uh, obviously I've been involved in the school system, been on the board for several years, have donated a lot of money, and I continue to donate outside. I, I supported the last budget, and I'll support this one. I'm not going to comment on that level. I'm going to comment on a couple of things, though. Uh, and I think uh, Ben Farino and a lot of others have said things. Uh, a year ago, I sat up here, we worked through a tough budget. Got it through, we had a six point whatever percent tax increase, very high, got support. Within that, we had a revenue enhancement of $50 for students. We came out with that in June because it was public before for, for parking. I never saw so much media show up. Interviews with TV, parents showing up complaining on $50, yet now, $500 for senior citizens is not an issue. So I guess I was even meeting with a lot of students, and one student said, well, I work, but it's tough to come up with $50 because I like to go to the mall, and I have to go to the movies. I'm thinking, what type of education are we doing? So I think part of this whole group, the school board, the public, the students have got to sit back and say, if we want, and we do, because I donate a lot of money outside of the school board directly to this town, directly to the schools, a couple thousand again this year for STEM. But the students... The parents and everybody else has got to step up and say, leadership starts with yourself. Students have to recognize $50, I should be paying it. There's not a junker out there that I see in the cars out there. So <laughs> strike one, I say, and somebody mentioned baseball, so I was just going to. Step two, last year, Dr. Ann Twistle, along with others, right in this community, set up an educational foundation. Excellent. I contribute to that, and I think it was a great thing to do. What do we get for donations? Less than 100000 a year. There's over 3,000 parents at even $500 a person, which is a small pittance relative to a private education, relative to college education. But what do we do? After the fact, people show up, just like they did for the $50 charge. Strike two. Last, early this month, Dr. Antwis, I thought, had a very nice thing. He called people, support to, not only to remind them to vote, but to vote in favor of the budget. What did we get? 1,500 people. Nobody. I want to make a comment on the two editorials that were written. I thought they were both good in the local papers. One by Ms. Perry, who I'm sure is here somewhere. Maybe she's not. I missed that one. <laughs> okay. She said, you know, where are the parents? Where were the students? They show up after the fact. The other one I thought was even more valuable, and I don't know the person's name, but she said, those that wanted more money, why aren't they contributing? We have all these mechanisms. Granted, I think a lot of people said this is public education, and public education should be, but things change. Things cost a lot of money. And if you're not willing to invest in yourself as a student, or you're not willing to invest in parent, as a parent in your student, whatever the level, whether it's $100 or $5,000, why can you go to a senior citizen and everybody else and say, I want you to pay the fair share? I guess it's the American way. So let somebody else pay for it without leadership. 
I go back to the board. There's not a single board member that I know of that donates their entire time. They all get paid. Do they donate? No. So I will wrap up quickly, Ronnie. But my <laughs> whole you. point is I am supporting this budget. I support it in the past. I continue to donate outside funds to support technology and other things. And I hope that parents recognize, as somebody said, we've struck out three times already, but we have a second chance. And I hope the council approves a budget that's reasonable and the parents come out not only and vote for a budget, but more importantly, come out and support the Educational Foundation, come out and show leadership and step up with your own funds, however small or however big, and you'll find out that the rest of the community will support you if you, if you contribute yourself. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next, uh, hold your applause. Next, uh, name and address, please. You have uh, three minutes, and keep your comments to, towards the council. Hi, my name is Nancy Jones, and I live at 126 Broad Turn. And pardon me for not having prepared notes, um, but thank you for, for your time and the opportunity to speak. I just wanted to bring up a couple points. Um, I was looking into the South Portland schools. I was trying to find a school district around here that had about the same amount of students that we have. And in South Portland, they have, according to the enrollments that um, I was given from the superintendent's office, about 100 less students than what we have here in Scarborough. And their town council just approved a school budget of 43 million. And we saw on the slides that in Scarborough, what we have in the budget for the schools is last on the list all the time. And, and we're not getting the best bang for our buck. We, we can't keep having these low budgets and expect to have quality education. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that they researched and moved here to Scarborough because of the schools. Um, in my case, I, I'm here by default. I married a man who lived in Scarborough. So 20 years ago, I moved to Scarborough. And at that time, I was thrilled. I thought, hey, when we have kids, this is going to be great. And so now I have three kids, and we've been in the schools for almost 11 years. And I've just seen it erode and erode and erode more and more. And it's, it's very disheartening. Um, I, I think at the very least we need the budget with the 54000 cut. I don't even want to see that cut at all. I would like to see it even presented as it was um, a couple weeks ago. And, and I did vote, and I'm going to come out and, and vote again. Um, what I would charge the town council to look at is, and, and I don't, it's not that I'm trying to take monies away from anything else in, in the uh, town, but to look at the ratios of what the school budget is compared to all the other services that are in town. And if there's any way to change those ratios so that people don't look at just the school budget as increasing our taxes, uh, because it's not just the school budget. It's, it's everything that we're paying our town taxes on. So I would just ask for you to do that, as well as the state we're losing a million dollars from last year to this year. What can we do to have a better stand so that we're not losing money every year. And I know it has something to do with property taxes, but I'm not privy to the whole formula. And just what can we do as a town so that we can decrease the amount of money that gets decreased from the state? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, um, anybody else? Anybody else? Step right up. Let's get, let's get a line going here. Um, name, address, three minutes. My name is Danielle Sullivan, and I um, live at 361 Holmes Road. And I'm one of those young parents um, who have three kids in Scarborough, and I married a man who lived in Scarborough. And for the man who asked where were all those parents who didn't come out and vote, and I was working. Um, I work a really, I work long hours. Um, I re my kids require before and after care. Um, I basically work to pay for the before and after care so we can have health insurance. Um, but I like living in Scarborough. Um, my six-year-old goes to kindergarten, and at his team meeting, I was told that, you know, they weren't really sure if he could, if he should continue to the first grade um, because he required a lot of hand-holding. 
And I thought, hand-holding, what does that mean? She goes, we think he can do it, but he just needs more attention that sometimes we can't offer him. And that really concerns me. Um, I understand budgets. Um, I'm a director of nurses for a long-term care um, facility and skilled facility, so cuts, budgets, I get it. Um, but when you or your loved one want to put someone in a nursing home, you go to a site and you look for quality, you know, and that's what we need to look for here for our kids is quality. Um, and you just can't cut money if you want quality, and it really concerns me. And if we do, then I'll have to take my kids to elsewhere. Um, although I do love Scarborough School, the school system that my husband grew up in, um, I just, I'm really concerned and I hope you hear us. Thank you very much. Next, name and address. Ted Reserve, 25 Houghton Street. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention. Uh, first of all, I don't think that the uh, citizens that voted against the school budget necessarily do not support the students or the schools. It's more about the budget and the economy we live in. I looked at the budget over the past, since 2005, and it's been a four, uh, $18 million increase by my, the way I subtracted it out. Uh, since 2005. That's a lot of money. In fact, it was only one year that I, that I found where the budget was less than the previous year's budget. So uh, the gentleman has said that, uh, you know, your cut, been cut. Well, I don't call those cuts if it's more than what you got the previous year. A couple other quick things I wanted to mention. Uh, I was a little disappointed in uh, some of the comments tonight about the the vote on the budget. That was 10 percent, and that pretty much is the most that you ever get for just a budget vote. And I think it does a disservice to the people who voted uh, at that, whether they voted for it or against it, to say that it didn't, uh, didn't provide a true reflection of the general populace. Well, it did that day in that vote. It may not be next week, but that, it did that day. I want to congratulate Doug Bennett. I think the little thing that he put out about he wanted to uh, make sure he jammed the hall with uh, parents, family, students. He seemed to have been very successful. Probably kept some of the senior citizens out if that's what he wanted to do. Uh, that worked. Also, he said that uh, they lost that vote because full buses and cars and volunteers helped citizens who didn't have kids in school, pour in and vote the budget down. You know, it sounds like, like it sounds like you want to start a generational war or something. I just think it's poor. As far as some of the comments I heard tonight about the kids didn't have books, they don't have papers and that, someone ought to be fired. I can't believe that uh, the kids don't have uh, books that they can take home. It seems to me that someone's falling down on the job. I don't know if anybody's ever been fired for not supporting you know, doing what they were supposed to in the school. I looked at some of the administration. You know, it looks to me like that might be a place, you know, when the budgets are tough, you might want to start cutting there. I don't know why a high school has to have two vice principals, or why the middle school and the uh, Wentworth school principal has to have an assistant. You know, times are tough. Maybe we can afford it two years down the road, but I don't think we can afford it now. And also, I'm not sure exactly what adult education is, but if that's not supporting the individual school, the students, then we ought to cut there too. We might be able to bring it back, or we can, you know, maybe uh, set up a program where we coordinate it with the other good schools like uh, Cape Elizabeth, you know, and have a, you know, a group uh, uh, to do the uh, adult ed. Uh, I'll, I'll think I'll just stop there for now, but I'm just really disappointed to, that uh, to think that everybody's against the uh, kids and the students uh, because they uh, don't want to support uh, this big an increase in the budget. Because uh, I don't think that you can judge quality of education just on the amount of money you pour into it. If Thank that you. was the case, Solinda would have done a great job. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Name and address, three minutes. Anybody else? Three minutes and... My name is Jane Lin, and I live on 11 Abigail Way, and uh, uh, I want to thank all the parents who come today because um, this is so, such an important topic, and I, uh, we, a lot of us did not show up 
on the at the uh, voting. And I think today, you know, we glad to see this turn out. However, the final is not going to be. Um, this is not the end of the battle. You know, we have to. The results going to be as a ballot on the 10th. So we have to keep working. And I also want to thank the town council for putting on the budget to vote last time. And you all know that budget was worked very hard by the superintendent with the, the school board, and it was have uh, every all the residents' interest in consideration. So um, this time, I know the turnout wasn't great, and uh, from what you know, those the uh, electoral uh, population here that half of probably uh, city citizens and half with family, uh, young children. However, um, I think a lot of grandparents would have supported the, the grandchildren education. So, uh, if just like the school budget, we had a such huge turnout. So this, what we saw last voting, was not uh, really representative of the state uh, support of the support. Uh, in this town, so I urge, truly urge you, you know, to give us another chance, and um, you can see it from tonight. I know last Thursday at the school board meeting there were just three parents show up, and I know today we have more than 100 or 100 parents, as you can see. So uh, we really, really, are, you know, I really want to say, you know, this community supports our schools, and please um, give us another chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else would like to speak? Step right up. Name and address. Three minutes. Hi, Leslie Lagerquist. I'm at 18 Partridge Lane. A um, lot of things to react to here tonight. Number one is thanks to you guys. I do understand and wish I knew as much as you did about the full budget and what's involved and where you've had to cut and where you're thinking it just can't be cut. I think we would all understand a, a lot if we could be in, have your, you know, share your seat next to you while you were doing it. So thank you for your work. Um, to the gentleman who came up before and was concerned that people here are not paying attention or, or discounted the 10% of voters um, and, and think that you're, you're confrontational to the, youth, the parents and the people who are young in the school. I, keep, I hope that's, comments oh, I'm sorry. That. I hope that's not true. I hope people are not feeling that way to people that are older um, because we are all one community. I think that for long term, it's essential that we look at education and realize that the long term revenue of Scarborough is fully dependent on having a mix of ages in order to support the overall services. I can tell you, I brought my kids, I dragged them here, they have no idea what they were walking into tonight, and I'm going to hear about it tonight, <laughs> but um, it was worth it to me. And I, but I feel that education is critical. Uh, I didn't know how badly Scarborough was scoring. I moved to Maine um, 15 years ago. We've lived here for 14 of those 15 years. I've never lived anywhere this long in my life, and um, I love it. But I have to say that um, it's time for us to find a new house because we're outgrowing it. We've got a big, big kids, and, you know, I have to look at it. And people have said, people of my age are going to think about moving. I have to say that, yes, I am going to think about it. I don't want to. I love the people here. I love the schools. I'm so impressed with the community. But I can't discount the education that's here. So I'm, I'm not a figure. I'm, I'm a person, and so this is what I feel. Um, so I hope that you will. I so respect that you are taking a second time to listen to us, and I hope that tonight it's mattered and that you will make a great decision for the whole community. Thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address. Anybody else would like to speak? Going. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. My name is Jill Conover, and I'm from Pinoak uh, Drive here in Scarborough and the mom of a fourth grader at Wentworth. I want to thank you all for your time. I actually do have some experience with sitting on the other side at public hearings. I know it can make for a long night, and I appreciate your time and service to our community. I moved here uh, almost two years ago from the Mesolonsky school system for my son, a um, single parent, and uh, education, health and education are our two priorities, so I put my house in the market, I found a new job in the Portland area, and we moved down here for the, for the Scarborough School District. I did my research, I was very thoughtful. I went to a number of different resources to really learn about the school districts in this area. And we chose Scarborough, and I could not be more pleased with that decision. The teachers, the administrators, the guidance counselors, 
everybody in the schools are at, being asked to do more with less, yet they, from the bus driver that picks my son up from every, mor every morning to his teacher group that greets him with a smile on his face every day, to every special teacher, to the Spanish teacher. My son got, uh, was able to have Spanish for the first time this year, which he's really enjoyed. Um, they've all really worked really hard, and I'm super proud of this decision. However, I'm, I am renting an apartment right now. We chose school over housing, basically, um, because I haven't sold my house up there yet. Um, and I really have to think about, um, I'm, I'm, I have some flexibility right now, and I would really love to stay in the school district. And so I really hope that you look to the future. I mean, I, don't, I know you all are um, very capable people. You know the return on investment in education uh, is huge. Study after study shows it, and there's nothing more important for our children. And we get more, but much more back than we than we than we pay into it. So you know, I've moved. I found a new job. We came down here. What more can I do? I would be happy to pay more taxes for our school system. I, I would like to see the budget increase for the school system incrementally you know, in a thoughtful, strategic way so that the investments are made strategically in the best interest of our children. And I have a high degree of confidence in the leadership of the school system and the administrators and the teachers all the way through. So, but we do have to look at other options. And I am concerned that people, parents will make other decisions, whether it's homeschooling to get their, their children's needs met, which would affect, obviously, the amount of subsidy the system gets, or a combination of homeschooling and, and access in the schools, or, or moving. And I, you know, I love this community. It's been a great fit for us. I'd really, I really hope that we continue to kind of make the investments. And I'll just add one more thing. My son and I had the opportunity to visit a MIT uh, recently down in Boston. And when we walked in, um, I saw the world under the dome. And I've heard a lot about the other school districts, you know, that we are competing with Yarmouth and Falmouth and Cape Elizabeth and all these school systems that I researched before we moved down here and we, we chose Scarborough over. We're not just competing with those schools. We're not just competing with Maine schools. We're not just competing with the United States. Our children are competing with the world. It is a different world. There are challenges that they are going to face. Uh, you saw the budget, the health care line. We saw that, the energy costs. There are things that, aren't, that we have to pay to provide and it comes out of our children's education line items that they're having to make up. So there would be a normal increase, even if a dollar or more wasn't going into education, it would be going up without that because of things like transportation and energy and health care costs. Thank so you. I'm going to leave it at that, but I just I hope that you continue. And I have faith and confidence that you will do the right thing and continue to invest in our children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Again, when you have the little music down the end, your three minutes are up. Hi, I'm Cheryl Greenleaf. I live at 31 Stanford Lane. I'm a nervous speaker, but I just, so I'm going to keep this very brief. I just wanted to express my um, support for the school budget. Thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. Three minutes. My name is Tom Michaud. I'm uh, at 149 Old Blue Point Road. Um, I just wanted to be here to say that uh, it's not only parents who support the schools. Um, I am not a parent. I don't have any close friends who are parents in the school system. Um, I'm not close friends with any of the teachers or staff or anything like that. But I know that schools are the core of a community. And if we continue to underfund them, um, parents will go elsewhere. They have other options in southern Maine. And when they do, the property values will be hit. And the community itself will lose integrity. Um, I grew up in Millinocket, and when the, when the mill started to go under, the parents started leaving. And when the parents started leaving, the town started dying. Um, it became a shell of what it once was. And to see that happen here in a town that I love living in and hope to live in for a long time into the future um, would be something I would really, really hate to see. Um, the economics of what it would take to support the schools and provide the additional funding they need is tiny compared to what might be lost. So, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Next. Step right up. Good evening. My name is Lisa Benditson. I live in 21 Sequoia Lane. I have a son in the Scarborough Schools. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and to hear um, what everyone else has said tonight. 
and I guess my thought is a simple one, and it goes to the role everyone has here. It's the role of the parents and the citizens to come speak with you, convey our thoughts. Um, it's the role, I think, of each member of the board, of the council, to remember that just because you can do, do something doesn't mean you should. We had this vote. Uh, it did not pass the first time. The school board, the people that we've entrusted to look at these issues the hardest, to spend the most time out of all of us, have looked and determined what budget additional cuts they feel could be made if they needed to. I would just urge you to look at your role and think, am I really in a position to impose my judgment to cut things even further? And is that something, even though I could do it, should I do it? Um, thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. Drew Guire, uh, 26 Ocean Avenue. Um, I just wanted to, to bring up one point. I'm, I'm a supporter of the schools. From what I heard tonight, it sounds like the school budget needs to, uh, to remain in, intact. But I did not hear, all I heard was, you know, for the school budget, for the school budget, but I did not hear one comment that suggested that the town municipal budget get cut. In other words, if, if there's so many folks here that are in support of the school, it's not an either or. There has to be some compromise from the town council. The town council has to relook at the budget and assist the school budget. I, I get tired of looking at the school budget, get thrown under the bus, you know, every year. I have two kids in school. I've got a fourth grader and a, and a freshman. And I just think, in all fairness, I think the council has to revisit the budget, their side of the budget. That's all I have. Thank you. Next, name and address. Hold that down, please. Anybody else left? Yeah, go ahead. Um, hello, my name is Maureen DeVoe. I have, I have 15 Winmore Drive. Um, I have three kids in the school system currently. I can tell you absolutely my youngest child is not getting anything like the quality of education of my first child. Her class size is huge. Her teachers are exhausted. They feel underappreciated. I'm a little offended, I'm going to say, by the suggestion that we should give more. I pay for every single thing my kids do. I send pencils, paper, construction, field trips. I volunteer in every single one of my kids' classes. I do all the photocopying for all of my teachers. If I'm missing a few things, it's because I don't have time to do my at-home stuff because I'm almost a full-time employee of the school. So to suggest that parents aren't ponying up is so unfair. I will also say I agree with the gentleman who spoke and said this is not a competition but to our adversarial relationship between seniors. The seniors that I am friendly with assure me they are not voting against the school. They are voting against a tax increase. However, they have no authority or responsibility or way to approach the municipal side budget. 41 positions have been cut from the school side, none from the municipal side. However, they don't have an opportunity to vote on that. The only thing they get an opportunity to vote on or control for a tax increase is the school side. To, so to support Drew's comment, the school is getting thrown under the bus, but it's not because the seniors are anti-children or anti-school. The middle school volunteers at the Veterans Center, they have wonderful relationships with the seniors in our community. However, the seniors don't want a tax increase and they cannot approach the municipal budget at all. If these drastic cuts are required of the school, I simply can't understand and can't get an answer to why those sorts of position cuts are not required on the other side. And the town council is representing us there, and I have to think it's your turn to look over there for a little bit. It's unfortunate the state and the federal government are not supporting us, but that doesn't mean we throw our school system under the bus. And I am in a position to send my kids to private school and will probably choose that in high school for my youngest daughter if this tide does not turn. I would have sent my son, but he was adamant he wanted to stay in Scarborough. I support my town so much and public education so much. I'm hoping the tide is going to turn. I won't regret my decision not to send him private, but I, I have to say if we cannot rebuild the school to what it was when my son started, I would definitely have to consider that in order to have him prepared to face the challenges of an international community. I don't think he's going to have that if things stay the way they are. I hope you will look for the cuts elsewhere and support the budget. I would hope you would add back into the budget. I feel it's probably unrealistic, but I don't support the cuts that came down to begin with. I did support the budget at Dr. Antlissel's request, 
but I would really prefer that we move forward, that we start competing with our peers, not just in the state of Maine, but nationally, to have our children have an equal opportunity to good college education. Thank you. Thank you. Next, name and address. <laughs> Kelly. Is that it? Are we done? Everybody else? Anybody else? First call, last call, I don't see anybody. We'll close the public comment. What's the pleasure of the council? Would move approval. Second. Um, order. I don't, I, don't, I have to pull <laughs> yeah. it up. Hang on. Uh, order 1347. Second. Second. Any discussion? Second. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Next item. Order number 1348 is act to set the date, time, and location of the school budget validation referendum for Tuesday, June 11th, 2013. And I'll turn this over to the town clerk to tell us all about the voting information. Okay. Uh, the polls open up at 7 a.m. We'll close at 8. Absentee ballots are currently available. However, the way the law is written, they cannot. you can obtain one tomorrow, but they cannot be returned until June 6th. Any any that's returned prior to them are automatically rejected by state law. So uh, information will be posted on the web uh, with regards to um, obtaining an absentee. The application will be out there hopefully either tonight or first thing in the morning. So. And our next, um, the yeah, um, June 5th, it starts at 6 o'clock, the public hearing and the second reading on the budget will be done. Thank you. Having nothing else, we have a motion to adjourn. We need a so vote on the warrant. Oh, uh, we need a vote on the warrant. All those in? We need a motion. A motion? Judy? So motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Is the vote? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Second to that, all in favor of adjournment? <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Good night.